Hi everybody, welcome to the first episode of Heiner's Workshop Lessons. Watch this and be part of our apprentice training program. Today we start a new series called Off-Grid Auto Electric. Stay tuned, subscribe and learn how to build your own vehicle setup. Enjoy! is called the theoretical basics in a nutshell and yes we have to learn a little bit of theory behind it to make it easier we've got our whiteboard here I'll be drawing on there uh, you can also go to perthpro.com.au the exact link is somewhere down below in the description and download a PDF everything I'll be writing on here today is on the downloadable PDF as well to make it easier for you so enjoy the first episode so the idea is, I want to teach you guys what the basics are. So we start with the very basics, the electrical units. We've got a few to cover here. Uh, the first one is the voltage. And voltage, we can compare that to water pressure. So it's quite easy to understand how electricity works by thinking about it as being water, because it's a lot easier for people to grasp how that works. And voltage is equal to water pressure in a hose. Until you let it go, it's just pressure, it's not doing anything. The second one is current. Current is the same as the flow of water. So it is like it's the flow of electrons, very equivalent to it. Uh, the voltage we obviously measure in volts, and uh, the sign for it is a U. When we use equations, current is measured in uh, amps or ampere, and the sign for the equations is a I. So this is volt, and the sign for it is U. This is amps, the sign for it is a I in an equation. The next one we've got is resistance. Uh, resistance is measured in ohms and it is like a restriction, like a kink in a garden hose. So it is something that counteracts the free flow of electrons or the free flow of water. And we measure that in ohms sign for it is this, and uh, it's R when we put it in an equation. So these are the three very basic ones for electricity. The next one we get from there is power. It's also very important because that is usually what you find everywhere on uh, descriptions for light bars, for example, or for solar panels. So the power is another unit. We usually put that as, uh, it's measured in watts, and the sign for the equations is a P. So and power calculates itself by multiplying voltage and current, and that will give us the power of something. So if you want to compare that to water, it is uh, the water pressure and the water flow, for example, driving a pump, if you want to think about it in a hydraulic way. That is the power that we can get from an electric circuit or the power that an appliance needs to run. Uh, the next important one that we always talk about is amp hours. Uh, that is usually when we talk about batteries. So amp hours are the amount of amps stored in a battery, but it doesn't take into account any voltage. So we've got amp hours or AH. That is always used, you, you find that on batteries a lot. So for example, you get a 12 volt 100 amp hour lithium battery. Or you get a 24 volt 100 amp hour lithium battery, or you get a 48 volt 100 amp hour lithium battery, for example. Uh, 
Now, amp hour will only tell you how much amps you can get out of it. It doesn't take into account how much power is stored in that battery. The proper unit to measure the energy stored in the battery is watt hours, because that includes the voltage of the battery, but in the same time includes how many amp hours are stored in that battery. That is watt hours, or WH. Uh, to give you an example, if you have got a 12 volt, 100 amp hour battery, we usually say it's a 12.5 volt battery, that has got 1250 watt hours stored in it. Now, if you have a 48 volt battery that has got 100 amp hours stored in it, that is about 5,000 watt hours of stored energy. So you see the difference in between amp hours and watt hours. So it's very important to keep the two apart. That is the, that is the real basics. That is, as soon as we know that, we know pretty much everything that we know about building an electric system into a mobile setup. That, that will cover us for battery systems, that will cover us for light systems, and for most other stuff as well. From here, we can now try to use the things that we've just learned to calculate some real basics so that we know how to lay out a circuit uh, to know later on what fuses we need to use or what wire size we need to use. Now that we know what these mean, or at least we've heard about them, uh, we get to the two most basic formulas that you will need in autoelectrics. And one is called URI, the other one is called PUI. We've got this one, U equals R times I, and we've got P equals U times I. Please refer to these symbols here so you know what they are. So this is voltage equals resistance times current. So with this, as soon as we got either the voltage or the current, or the current and the resistance and so on and so forth, we can calculate the third one. But the one that we'll be using mostly in our installations is this one. The power equals the voltage times the current, as we just did before to get the uh, watt hours from the battery. As a little example, just so that you understand, it's, it's not something that we really have to do a lot, but just so that you understand the basics of it, uh, I've set something up here where we can check if we've been doing the calculation all right. So let's, let's think about, you want to put an LED indicator onto your car. But the LED indicator uses almost no current so that you don't get that quick flashing light. You have to put a resistor in there as well. So now you have to know how big does that resistor need to be. And all we know from the glow when we look at it is it's a 12 volt glow. So we can put here the glow is 12 volt and it's got 21 watt. What we need to know is this one. We need to know the size of the resistor that we need to put in there in ohms. But we've only got the voltage and the wattage. So what we need to do is we need to find out the current because we got the voltage and we got the wattage. So we can change the formula around and we get to power divided by the voltage equals the current. So all we need to do from here is we put the 21 watt up the top, that's that, and we divide that by 12 volt, and that will give us, I've prepared this earlier, 1.7 
amps. So that is the current <coughs> that will flow through this globe when we hook it up to 12 volt. Then instead of using 12 volt in there, you use 24. Uh, 24 in there, and the current uh, is usually a bit smaller that way. Because if the voltage is higher, the current can be lower and will still be the same electric power. We're halfway there. We know the current, and we still know the voltage of the globe. That means now we've got the voltage, and we've got the current, so we can now calculate the resistance. So to do that, we'll change the formula around a little bit again, and this formula here will give us U divided by I equals R. So that is 12 volt divided by 1.75 amps and that should be 6.9 ohm. I've already did that, it was 6.9 something something and I've already rounded that. So even that, in terms of what we will find in the workshop, you'll not find a 6.9 ohm resistor, or you, you'll be really lucky. So you'll probably find a 6 ohm resistor, or a 7, or a 6.5. So that is close enough. What you usually do is you flick through a book, and you find the closest one. <laughs> Plus, in reality, we'll have probably 30.2 volt, or 30.5, or 14 volt, or the battery is a bit empty, or will be a bit less. So we just have to know, we have to be somewhere around the 6, 7 mark, somewhere there. It's close enough to know that it's, it doesn't have to be 15 or 30 or something like that. So it is not super precise, especially because the voltage is never going to be exactly 12 volt all the time. Depending on the alternator you got in your car, that might vary a fair bit depending on the driving cycle. Let's say if you would be uh, taking out three indicators, uh, sorry, three globes, and you replace them all with LEDs, and you want to create the exact same load because otherwise your lights start flashing fast, then you can either use three resistors, or up here, you don't start calculating with 21 watt, but you start calculating with 63 watt, and then you find the resistor, one resistor that have the right value to replace all three globes. So that really is the absolute basics. With this, and mainly with this formula, we can calculate a lot of things. Because usually we will find that uh, you buy, let's say, a light bar that's got 120 watt power, and you go, what fuse do I need? What cable size do I need to actually run to that light bulb. You can use this formula, you put 120 watt in there, you divide it by 12 volt, 24 volt, 48 volt, wherever you'll be running it off, and it will give you a current. And from that current, you can then pick the right fuse size, and you can pick the right wire size. And what these are, we'll learn in the next episode. So, that was the theory. I've prepared one earlier here. So that is a resistor. It's got 6 ohms resistance. It's written on it. So we can measure that. 5.8. So close enough. And to double check ourselves that everything else is alright, that we calculated the current right and everything, we can now turn this on. I will put this to voltage measurement. I turn this on. I've set that to 12 volt before, and we can see that it's now drawing 1.9 amps through the resistor. So we're not exactly where we were, but that is what you get when you calculate these things and then you measure them in real life. You get close to it, but you know, we got losses in the cables and we won't have exactly 12 volt on here. As you can see, it's only 
Uh, the resistance is a little bit smaller than what we had on there. That's probably where the larger current is from. But we are close enough that we know, yeah, that worked. What we did there actually checks out in reality as well. If you have got any questions, leave them in the comments and uh, we'll try to answer them in the next video. Apart from that, if you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe. Thank you. See you next time.